Good afternoon, everybody. Let's give you a moment to take your seats. This promises to be a, a fascinating 20 minutes. I'd like to present to you Minister of Finance from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nicholas Kazadi. Um, Minister Kazadi has been, been at the Finance Ministry since 2021, um, but that's the end of a long and or the end. This is the latest phase in a long and distinguished career. He started out at the Central Bank in the 90s um, when uh, Mobutu was, was still, in, still in power. Um, then in the spent much of the 2000s and the 2010s working in international development at the African Development Bank and then at UNDP. And then came back into government um, when President Felix Tshisekedi was elected uh, in um, 2019, initially serving as an advisor at the presidency and now at the finance ministry. Um, I, mean, I am a kind of closet Congo um, kind of enthusiast follower. I first visited the country in 2007. I've kind of followed everything there for the last 15 years. I lived there from 2015 to 2017. I probably have spent more time studying Congolese mining companies than I should have. So for me personally, it's great to be able to have this conversation with the minister. Um, I've got dozens of questions. I'll try and keep them short and we will try and get some answers. Minister, I wanted to start with copper and cobalt. Obviously, Congo is Africa's biggest copper producer. It's the source of 70% of the world's cobalt. Last year, copper production was up 33%, so you produced a massive 2.4 million tons. Cobalt production was up 24%, 115,000 tons of cobalt. What's the plan this year? Can you, can you keep growing production, and is that the objective? Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to apologize because I made my best to be here, but in the meantime, I lost my, my voice because of COVID. Yes. Uh, in fact, the objective is not only to increase production. The, the objective for us is to get more added value on, uh, locally. That's the main objective. But uh, as you know, we are still uh, increasing production. By 2030, I think, on, on copper, we, we will reach uh, close to 5 million tons of copper. On cobalt, I cannot say so far, but... Uh, we still have a room. Um, we are still increasing production, but unfortunately, it is still raw material that we are producing and exporting. Our objective is to transform it locally. Mm. I mean, with that in mind, recently you signed a agreement with the Zambian government supported by the United States. Um, the long-term objective there is to build a full battery supply chain in Congo. I mean, how viable is that? Yes, I think... Uh, in that regard, I can say that we are at a, a, a crossroad. Uh, if we miss that, it will be like we, we are missing our development. Uh, every Now, I, you know that the, the Bloomberg study that was done uh, one or two years ago, it shows very clearly that we have a comparative advantage. Doing those batteries locally is uh, uh, more um, profitable than doing it in the US or in China. So we have to take that advantage. And uh, so far, we are going very well. We have established, we have set up uh, the Conseil Congolais de Batterie, uh, an entity which is in charge of that. For the, for the time being, we are designing a master plan to know exactly what are the needs, private investment, public investment, and uh, all the needs that will lead to that. Uh, it is something that can change the economy completely, because now the revenue are growing, production is growing, GDP is growing. We have been the fast growing economy in Africa last year, but we don't see a decline in poverty. Poverty is still very high. Even if the, the average poverty is declining, the number of poor is still increasing. The only way to change that is to have that uh, transformation, local transformation. Okay, I think it's the right, it sounds like the right objective, but Congo doesn't have a great track record at delivering these projects. So you think of a big project like Grand Inga, it's been on the books for years, never hasn't happened. And we think about the recent efforts to formalize artisanal mining in the cobalt sector, no, like EGC. Again, EGC was conceived, it was announced, hasn't really progressed. On, on EGC, what, what's happening with Yes, EGC? but before, it's so important to, to let you know that 
Now we are not talking about big, big projects mm -hmm. that we cannot uh, afford. Uh, I, I see uh, my friend Benedict there. He can tell you that he is currently, they are building the, the biggest uh, plant uh, transforming cobalt in Africa. Of, uh, I can even say in the world. It will add uh, up to 40% of the value of the cobalt produced in Congo mm. before export. It means that we are talking about reality, we are in the move. Now you're talking about EGC, yes, uh, it's a very important point. EGC is to better manage the smuggling of cobalt and uh, there is a problem in that area because what is happening in that sector now is below all the standard, social standard, environmental standard, standard. and uh, the, as a result, we don't get the value for the cobalt. We are the first produ producer of cobalt, the first uh, reserve of cobalt, the, we see the increase of the demand of cobalt at the world level, but we continue to see the decline of the price just because we are not able to manage it accordingly. And that's why it is very important to get into it through the EGC, uh, which took uh, a long delay. We have, to, we have to speed it up. I mean, recently there were some management changes at Jekyllman, so there's a new chairman of the board, there's a new director general. Is one of their responsibilities to get EGC going? No, you know, it, was, it, it is a long journey. It, it was not very easy, but now it is very clear that there is a consensus among all the stakeholders that we cannot uh, delay this process anymore. We have to speed it up because it's a strategic uh, um, subject for the country. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you talking about the need for Congo to extract greater benefit from the minerals that have historically been exported. One of the most one of the flagship initiatives that President Felix Tshisekedi has taken since he came into power was his willingness to challenge some of the existing Chinese investments in the country. So he began a review of the famous Sikkimins deal. Um, what was the idea? Why, why did he do that? And what's the status of that? Yes, but that you should process? present it the right way. It is not about challenging Chinese investment. It is about challenging investment that are not fair. And it is not only with Chinese. We have some issues with others also. But the Chinese are the most important players currently in the country. And we are trying to fix two or three uh, major issues that we have with their companies, which uh, are very important to the country. Mm. And as I, I'm, I always say, we should not see it as a political issue. It's an economic issue. We are discussing with the Chinese. I'm sure that we will get to an agreement with them. Uh, but uh, what is clear is that uh, what happened in the past was not fair because those who negotiated those uh, agreements were not well informed on the situation. And now it is clearly, the, it is very obvious that uh, it was not fair and uh, we all agree on that. The only thing is that we have to, to, to close the, the negotiation. Mm. But I think it was interesting for me to see that the, the Damb Zambia DRC agreement has for developed battery supply chains in Congo and Zambia is supported by the US government. Because yeah. kind of five years ago, one might imagine that that initiative would have been supported by the Chinese government. Yes, but the only thing I can say on that is that it is not in our interest to have to put all our eggs in, the, in one bag. Uh, uh, to have more transparency uh, in this business, it is important for us to have a more balanced partnership and in that regard, it is clear that uh, we, need to, we need to get to that. And I think on the transformation, the local transformation, we can balance a little bit our partnership uh, when it comes to cobalt and copper. And so just my final question on, on the engagement with Sikkimins. Is your sense that you will be able to re review and where necessary, renegotiate those terms whilst not damaging Kinshasa's bilateral relations with Beijing? No, but as you know, China, China is a very big player at the world level, even for your countries, for any country. Uh, uh, but it is clear, and I make it very clear, that it is not in our interest to put all our eggs in one bag. For now, they are controlling all the line, in, uh, in, uh, especially in cobalt. But we think that as we need transformation, it is an opportunity to, to balance a little bit our partnership 
But China will remain a key partner for the country and for, for Africa, uh, and even for the world, I can say. Um, another, another specific question, not about Sikkimins, but about another Chinese investment. I think a lot of the room will be interested in the status of the ongoing dispute between Jacobins and Tenkif and Gurumi, specifically with China Malibdan and over the tax payments that Congo argues it is owed. Yes. So at the moment, there's, I mean, according to the latest stats, there's about 120,000 tons of copper sitting at that mine, 12,500 tons of cobalt sitting at that mine, which can't be exported. Can you tell us anything about how close you are to a resolution and yeah. when that Yes, when yeah. that method yes. Be able there to is a big issue on uh, the way they, the, they have calculated the reserve uh, of Tanky Fungurumi mine at the beginning. And uh, it, is already, it is now clear that the figure that they gave at that time were not uh, real. And the thing is that this come not from the Chinese themselves. The Chinese, they took over after a US-based company or, or Canadian company, which is Freeport. Mm. And it started with Freeport. The, the problem started with them. And the Chinese took over. But now they have to fix that because they are the owners. And what's the timeline? I mean, do you think that will be resolved in the next month, six months? We hope so. We, are, we have a good discussion. As I think you know, now it is getting at a higher level. As you know, uh, we recently the deputy minister of foreign affairs from China was in Kinshasa. I think there, is, there are some discussion at the highest level. I think we can get a solution very soon. Yeah. We hope to have that before the, during this uh, first semester of the year. Um, to, to change subject slightly and move to a different part of, or another part of your enormous country, um, President Shishiketi has also been quite vocal about Rwanda's role in what he says is a destabilizing role in Eastern Congo. Um, what I'd specifically like to ask you about is the <coughs> alleged smuggling of gold, of cassiterite, of coltan across the border. I mean, as long as I've been studying Congo, I've heard about allegations of that, but you very rarely hear someone kind of put a financial figure on it. Is it possible to estimate either how much money Congo loses or how much money Rwanda makes from that? Country? Yes, uh, as you know, it, only for last year, Rwanda exported close to 1 billion US dollar of gold and uh, treaty, coltan, etc. And, but as you may know, they don't have any coltan in the in the soil. So it all come coming from DRC. That is obvious. That's not about allegation only. It's uh, evidence. And uh, to give you an example, we have started a new partnership with the the EAU, uh, and uh, only we started in uh, January. We we. We set up a GV with the EAU, which is called Primera, uh, Primera Gold. And uh, we started in January. From January to now, we've made seven operations of export, uh, which reach 454, 454 uh, kilo of gold in a very limited period of uh, two, let's say two months. Last year, for the whole year, the same region exported only 27 kilo of gold mm. for the whole year because everything was going to Rwanda and sold in the AU and elsewhere uh, in the name of Rwanda while it was coming from DRC and we had no information on those exports uh, from, uh, from, um, from our country. And I saw the previous uh, panel was talking about uh, navigating sanctions. We are still talking about uh, a country invading another country. Uh, we have the same situation in DRC. And what we are trying to do now with the Emirates is one of the responses that we are giving on the economic side, while we still need other responses, including sanctions. But we are still waiting for those sanctions. So just to be clear, you're calling for sanctions on Rwanda for their role in Eastern It's Congress. obvious, because now it is, it is, it is made clear, clear that Rwanda is behind uh, the M23 uh, uh, so-called rebels. They are the ones who are inviting the country. The main reason is just to continue uh, to operate in the mining uh, in the region across to the border. And that's the reality. And now it is uh, even the UN have stated that very clearly 
now we are very surprised to see that there is no sanction, not even just, uh, how can I say it? Not even a be the beginning of sanction. Uh, this is also not fair at all. And we must know what kind of world we want to build. We have done our part. We have shown the most uh, voluntary uh, commitment to have good relation with Rwanda. We have even proposed, we have even signed with them in 2021 an agreement to exploit those mines, Colton and Gold, jointly. But it is clear that for them it was not profitable enough mm -hmm. and they prefer to go on smuggling and continue the work. And all this Colton is uh, sold outside, is in your telephone, in your iPad, in your telephone, until today. That's the reality. To move to another mineral, which Congo has, and which is probably also in my phone, um, lithium. Congo's got a big potential lithium project, project in Monono. It's also been in the news for various reasons. There's been a dispute with one of the owners, ABZ Minerals. So I understand it, their license has been canceled. Do you, can you tell us anything about what Congo plans for that deposit? Yes, uh, that, that, uh, that was done a bit. It was not very, very transparent. It, it was not to the best of our interests as a country. That's why we went uh, back to it. But I, I would not, I would like, I, would, I, would not, I don't like to say more on that because it is still on. Yeah. Um, if I can indulge a kind of personal interest of mine, I've, st I've studied the uh, kind of life of Israeli investor called Dan Gertler, who's been kind of associated with Congo for a long time. Um, he was sanctioned by the US government um, some years ago. The Congolese, Congolese government reached a deal with him last year whereby he is going to return a series of his assets to Congo. Um, I think Congolese government is going to pay him some money, $252 million. He's going to pay Jekamin some money, about 192 million uh, euros. Uh, and he hopes that that will basically kind of cleanse his record. Well, I mean, the one thing I think he wants is for the Congolese government to then ask the US government on his behalf to lift those sanctions. Is that something that no, Kishas is willing no, to do? No, we, we should be very pragmatic. We, are, we, are, um, we have so many issues in our country, as you may know. For us, what is important is to get back those assets which were in the end of Getna and to be able to get to operate those assets. That was the priority for the country. And there was a time for sanction, and the sanction, the US sanction against Gettler have been helpful for the country in our political journey, because it was, at that time it was necessary. But there is a time for sanction, and there is a time to, for do, to do something different. And for us as a country, the priority is to operate those assets, to get money, to get revenue for our people. And I think we are close to, the city, to, to an end on that, and we have made it clear to our partner, the US, the US were our strategic partner. We are very close to them on those issues. And uh, we think, we hope that we will get to a, a, a close on that, on that uh, case, on that get, uh, get to that case. Um, I, think just I don't think know if I missed something, if you... No, 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 I think, I, I think, no, I think you answered that fully. Um, let's see, we haven't got much time left. Let's see if there's, if there's one very short question from the floor. And if there's not, I will ask you another question because I have dozens on my sheet. Does anybody have a question for the minister? Excellent, I can ask another one. Um, carbon credits. Last year there was a proposal from a US investor, D Climate, to build a nationwide carbon sequestration database. Um, that hasn't happened yet. There were some problems with that deal. Just kind of interested big picture in Congo's plans to try and monetize the carbon sink yes, that is yes. Congo's the, 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 thing, the thing is that in that area and in some others, we, have, we are in lack of capacities. So sometimes it's not easy to go to a deal very quickly because we are not sure that what we are deciding is good. On carbon credit, you know the price are very low, especially when it is uh, about Africa. So sometimes we are not sure that what you are doing is a good decision because maybe after some time the price will go up and these are the kind of problems that we have. So we are building our capacities to ensure that what we are signing is a good deal for the country. But it is clear that our country has a, a big role to play uh, regarding carbon sequestration and others. Um, just one final question. I've, I've been jumping around about this. I'm gonna, come, I'm gonna bring it back to copper and cobalt and, and Katanga. Um, 
to 2.4 million tons last year, you'd like to increase that to 5 million tons by 2030. But one of the biggest breaks on increasing production is export. So at the moment, as anybody in the mining sector knows, it all goes across the border of Kasumba Lessa in this long, crazy line of lorries um, out towards Tanzania and, and, and South Africa. You have, a, I mean, there is a plan, I believe, to develop the rail corridor out to Lobito. I mean, Trafigura, who probably are in the room, I mean, they've got a, they've got a license to operate the Angolan side. What are the, what's the plan for developing that, that rail corridor from Congo to Delolo at the border? Who's going to, who's going to do that? Who's going to operate it? Yes, no decision has been taken so far. We are not, I, mean, I know that we are in discussion with Trafigura and with others, but uh, as I was saying, we are at the crossroad. If we don't take this opportunity of growing export of raw material to build our infrastructure, which are missing, you know, the country is, uh, the main challenge of the country is logistic. And second, in transforming locally to accelerate the poverty reduction, if we miss that, we are dead. So it's very important. And now we have the opportunity to do that. We have very good discussion with our, with our partners. Uh, and I think that uh, very uh, shortly we will uh, we will get to another another step, another level on uh, those projects. Not only the railway, but al also the road. Uh, but our objective, strategic, is not only to go to Lobito, because part of the mining can go can be exported to Lobito. It's 1.8 uh, 1,800 kilometers, I think. But we also have the national route, which goes uh, with, you have road or rail, you have the river and the, and the, the whole railway again to the, to the sea. Uh, that is the national route, is like 2,000 and something kilometer. It is the best one for us because it will give us the opportunity to build a value chain, to build uh, a value chain from the, from the mining area to the west side of the country, which is missing. Now you see in the center of the city, there's nothing. We should take this opportunity to create activity, economic activity uh, throughout the way uh, to, to the sea. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a good vision and a good thing to end on. Minister, thank you very much for traveling all the way to be here with and us. The other, and the other reason, so go ahead. we have to go to the west because now we are exporting 90% to the east. Our hope, our strategic vision is to transform and start selling to the west side. Mm. That's why it's important for us to build infrastructure from the east to the, to the west. Yeah, true, because you don't need to send batteries to China. You need to send batteries to the US and Latin America. Exactly. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank you.